welcome everyone again to the Monitoring Reports, what we call the 10 Rules of Effective Report Writing. I do have over 30 years experience in the clinical industry, both in drugs and devices, having worked for pharmaceutical companies, device companies, CROs. I currently operate a niche provider company that we provide monitoring and auditing services to the industry. In this regard, I have the opportunity to write reports and more often to review the monitoring reports for team members. This has become, or always has been actually, a major issue for regulatory agencies. We have to remember that the monitoring reports are all auditable by the regulatory authorities across the world, not just the FDA, but any other country that might be inspecting a study as well. And our writing style is very important. If they can't understand what we're writing, we're in trouble. We need to document everything we've done. The regulatory agency gets a flavor of our monitoring and the due diligence from their understanding of what is documented. If they don't understand it, they'll think we did not adequately monitor the study. And we see that very commonly written in warning letters, which is the result of their inspections. So we really need to pay a lot of attention to how we write and what we write in those reports, keeping in mind that not just the regulatory agencies, but our own management as well, are very often looking at those monitoring reports and making assessments, both about the monitor and the program itself. So what we tell in that report is extremely important and how we tell it. So our objectives this morning will be to examine the impact of poor report writing. What happens when they cannot understand it? What assessments might they make that are not correct? based on their understanding of what they saw in the report. This is also very important if we're using CROs, because the CRO will be writing the monitoring report. And we need to remember that the sponsor is ultimately responsible for all the reporting, all the monitoring. So we need, if we're in a CRO world, we need to make sure that the report is going to be understandable by the management of the sponsor company as well. And if we're in a sponsor company, we will have perhaps more than one person looking at those monitoring reports and making judgments as to how the study is moving along. Do we have compliance sites? Would this be a site we ought to use again? Things of that nature. We're going to apply some definitions today and some concepts of scientific report writing. Now, some companies pay a lot more attention to that than others. Is it really scientific? We can get carried away with that sometimes. And we don't want to spend a lot of time rewriting and redrafting these reports if it's understandable. So we'll discuss that in a little bit of detail as well. We'll talk about the 10 rules of quality report writing for the CRA and for the CRA reviewer. We'll apply those rules to the activities that we actually do while we're at a site. We'll talk a little bit about writing those clear deviations and queries. Now, if we're using paper CRFs, of course, we'll have paper documentation. If we're using electronic, which most of us are using, but not in all studies today, we'll be putting those queries electronically. But in either case, the report writing of those will be very similar. We'll talk about the integration of the essential documents within a monitoring report. And then finally, we'll discuss the challenges that we have as monitors in writing those and in reviewing them. And often that's the timeline that's set in our SOP as to when do we need to get this published? When does it have to come out? Who has to review it? What's the timeline for all of that? And how does that affect regulatory agencies when they discuss adequate monitoring and supervision of our study by the sponsor? 